Joining us right now, we have MSNBC political analyst and contributor Alexi McCammon. Good to see you, Alexi. So let's begin this chat with abortion rights, where President Trump has been contradicting himself, angering not only Christian conservative supporters, but Democrats, too. I mean, it kind of feels like he's playing Goldilocks. He's trying to find the just right answer for all voters, but not really having convictions of his own. I mean, the Goldilocks comparison is so apt, Alex, and I'm happy to see you and to talk about all this craziness. I mean, even by Trump's standards, the, the pace with which he has changed his mind on abortion and IVF in the last 36 hours is just remarkable, truly. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we have to be very clear that this man's legacy, Donald Trump's legacy, is being the man, the president, who stripped women in this country of our rights and freedoms. He is the one who once suggested that women seeking an abortion should be criminalized, that doctors helping them should be criminalized. He has created a permission structure for Republicans across the country to go after all of our rights to the point where they only want us to exist in the world so long as we can bear children and have our own biological children. It is bizarre. Hmm. I guess those who would call it weird, given the, the context of conversations these days and the adjectives being thrown around. That said, let's turn now to Trump calling for free IVF treatments for all who need it, courtesy of the government, but then not offering a realistic plan or any details on how to do it. It kind of sounds like Trump's 2019 infrastructure week that never was um, all over again that, right? Your thoughts? Yes, and just like the infrastructure week that never was, it's a reflection of how Donald Trump thinks the American people are stupid. He has said basically explicitly as much in the past, especially when talking about running as a potential Republican candidate in the future before he ever ran for office, he knew that he could manipulate people or try to manipulate people with his words and his sort of salesman-like pitches around policy. But these are not firmly held beliefs that are inspiring his policy proposals, which, by the way, are not just reshaping the Republican Party. His policies are reshaping the country for generations to come. I mean, the Supreme Court alone is a great example. Everything from abortion to affirmative action to gun control is affected by the conservatives that Donald Trump has gotten onto the scene. Hmm. So during her first interview as Democratic presidential nominee, VP Harris essentially shrugged off questions when asked about Trump. And the tactic is reportedly making the former presidency red. What are the chances, Alexi, that she takes a similar approach during the upcoming debate? I think that we will see her continue to do exactly what she's been doing, not only because it's been working, but because it's authentic to who she is as now a presidential nominee for the Democratic Party. She also knows that she's not going to let Donald Trump dictate important conversations, whether it's about women or racial identity in particular, and take the bait from someone who will just love to roll around in the mud with her at the end of the day. And also, they have just proven that any time they speak about out. the sitting vice president of the United States, it is with complete disrespect and falsehoods and ridiculous memes that they think are funny, but they're the only ones who think they're funny. And so I think we can expect her to do the same that she's been doing and to show that not only is she in the, the adult in the room, but she's not afraid of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. She knows men like him. Yeah. And beyond saying, you know, same old tired playbook about Trump's remarks, she did not go in depth on a number of items. Do you think the campaign is waiting until the debate to unleash more pointed attacks? I mean, holding back a little bit right now. Well, certainly. I mean, I think the debate stage will be a perfect opportunity for both campaigns to not only present their uh, vision for the future, but for them to try to create a contrast with the other campaign. The contrast is basically built in. Of course, Americans want different types of policy specifics, but with abortion becoming a top issue for nearly a quarter of female voters in the last couple of weeks alone in some surveys, there are a certain number of policy specifics that people will be listening for that, frankly, Donald Trump and Republicans have no good answers on, whether that is the economy, protecting democracy and freedom, reproductive rights for women, voting rights, gun control. All of these things matter to people across the board, and Republicans will have no strong policy proposals for that at the debate. Hmm. So with 66 days left to the election, what do you think VP Harris needs to do to cement her momentum over the next few months? Can she sustain it if she doesn't do any further interviews and just relies on the debate? 
I think what's remarkable is between President Biden dropping out of the race and, you know, the timing of all of this is how Democrats have essentially turned a presidential election, which lasts over a year, into what is essentially a special election. Three hmm. months, basically, two and a half months. Democrats have overperformed in proper special elections in the past because it really helps them keep their eye on the ball. It's much easier to energize and motivate voters to show up when it's asking them to do that with early voting in just a couple of weeks' time or proper voting on voting on election day in November. The fact that there are only a few weeks until then will certainly help the momentum sustain itself. And also, the threat of Donald Trump is becoming real, more real to Democratic voters as we get closer to the election, which will help the Harris Walls campaign maintain the momentum they've built in a short amount of time. Okay. Alexi McCammon, <laughs> come see us again very soon. Thank you. Yep.